James Howell here. I'm looking forward to being with you guys on the Holston Conference uh, in February. That's going to be great fun. Uh, looking forward to it. I was uh, asked these questions in advance, so let me go through these. One says, tell, me, tell us a little bit about your call to ministry. I wish I had a better story. You know, I'm like the person that kind of backed into this, not on purpose. Uh, Thoreau somewhere said, truth strikes us from behind and in the dark. You know, that's kind of how ministry, I, like I didn't mean to get into it, but I've been in it all this time. I loved it. Absolutely. Long, complicated story. But anyway, kind of back, I wish I had some better call nudgings for years, but that's just not been my um, experience. I, I hear about clergy that they, they struggle to worship in worship when you're leading worship. Somehow I've always been able to have to worship when I'm leading worship, which I feel fortunate about that. Helps me tremendously. Now, some of it's the community, right? That's our topic. It's the people that are there. This old girl that hugs me every week when I process in coming down the aisle. She just makes my day, and I feel loved. And sometimes we're singing the hymns or something. I just feel all this joy and hope, and you know, I wish I could you know, come back on Tuesday afternoon or Thursday night sometimes when it's a hard week. But being a minister has, I wrote, I wrote about this in one of my books. Like, I think it's helped me uh, behave better. Sounds ridiculous. But really. Uh, and it's pressed me to be more of a Christian because I got to focus on this stuff. If I were just a regular guy, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd do as well. So some of the ministries put a discipline around me that's um, helped me. I mean, good grief. I mean, it's always timely, but, you know, everything's so fragmented now. Everybody's in a bad mood. People don't know how to get along. So much tension and rancor and bleeds into church life. And I don't we have community. You know, just a lot of lonely people. You know, I, you know, it seems to me you can be lonely when you're around a big crowd of people bumping elbows. And how, how, do, we, how do we work on that? I think about things like you know, how to have community with people that you don't usually get to spend time with. We don't even know each other, and we come together and try to have community quickly. So that's that's hard. Uh, there was one blog where Wesley had he had these warring evangelicals, and and one of the things that Wesley committed to these people, I mean, they were you know fighting like cats and dogs with each other. Wesley said this thing that for anybody else in the church, you should always speak respectfully, honorably kind to each other, defend each other's character, speak all the good we can of each other, recommend each other where we can, and so on. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Like, if we could get that done. Um, I also read, uh, read this book about Benjamin Franklin. One of the things that he said is that we need to pray. Franklin wasn't a praying man, so that was unusual. This is sort of the Constitutional Convention it was like at loggerheads and thought they were going to break down and couldn't form a country. He was the one who suggested that we pray, and you know, we always pray at general conference, but it totally gets on my nerves because you know we're, we're about to take a vote, and some bishop says, "Let us pray," and I think what everybody's praying is, "Let my side win and let those other guys lose," and that's not a prayer. A prayer is when we say, "Not my will, but your will be done." When we open ourselves to something new that God would do, that's the thing. But the other thing that Franklin wrote said to that constitutional convention was this. He said, I cannot help expressing a wish that every member of the convention who may still have objections would with me on this occasion doubt a little of his own infallibility. Can we doubt our own infallibility? I mean, none of us thinks or teaches or preaches infallibly. I and mean, that's part of what it means to be in community. I preached a series in October on Job. Maybe some of you guys did this on the lectionary. You know, Job, Job's got the, he's got the friends, but like they're the worst friends. They're, they're spouting theology and they're just afflicting him. It's just sadistic. I mean, they're, they're saying like, ostensibly right things about God, but they don't really have community, right? So what's that about? So that, that was interesting to think about. I'm going to talk about some personal stuff, a uh, struggle I'm having with one of my daughters, um, we talk about my marriage and some things dealing with that's always how relationships are right it's not some vague thing somewhere we read this great book a nazareth manifesto and what he says in there is that with w-i-t-h with is the most important word in theology so that what the bible's about is that god is with us it's not that god fixes every problem or makes your life smooth or anything but god is with us so that's like a big deal and if god is with us then we're with other people we don't, we don't fix them. We don't treat them as projects. We're, we're with them. That's 
what defines mission works, what kind of define ministry. There's just a, such a rich resource there. I want to spend I want us to spend some time reflecting on that.